Hi guys, Misty here with Queen Bee's Vintage. Welcome to or welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I am going to be showing you the hope chest I have been working on that I chalk painted for a client. So this hope chest uh, was a lot of work and could have been a lot more if I was doing a full restore on it, but I didn't do a full restoration. The client wanted to leave it as is as far as the dings in the wood and things like that. I think it was a piece from her childhood. And so there's a lot of memories that go along with it. But she wanted it painted and um, a little more updated to go with her current decor. And the she's actually gonna put it at the foot of the bed. And the bed is very traditional and kind of elegant. So I will show you before and after pictures at the end of the video, but I think it turned out great as far as how it's going to work with the furniture she's going to be putting it with now. And I really hope she likes it. I hope you guys enjoy the video. Like I said, this is a fairly easy project as far as the actual painting of it goes. It took two coats of the chalk paint and then I did a gold gilding technique on it. So not a whole lot of, you know, techniques as far as um, layering or blending, things like that went into this project, but we'll get into that down the road. So I really hope you guys enjoy the video. I hope you have a happy Friday. I just want to show you I'm wearing my cute made of magic shirt that my sister sent me. So thank you, sis. I love it. And let's get into the video. Hi guys, Misty with Queen Bee's Vintage. So I have changed into my paint clothes. We are going to be working on this hope chest. I have already prepped the hope chest as far as washing it down really good with some TSP which is a cleaner and degreaser. So I made sure there was no like residue buildup or any wax finish left on it. There were some, some bad spots on this piece, so I did give it a light sanding um, in advance. That is not a requirement for the paint that I am using, but I wanted to do that because like I said, there were kind of some big gashes and scuff marks. So I'm going to go over the products we're going to use first and then we will get started painting. So today I am going to use this all-in-one chalk paint. This is by Heirloom Traditions. The color is called Iron Gate. It is black. And this all-in-one paint of theirs, you are not supposed to have to prime or seal. It has a built-in primer and sealer in it. So we're going to be using this. This um, dries to the touch within one to two hours and then has a 36 to 48 hour cure time and then full cure on this is 30 days. So we're gonna be using that today. We are going to be using Heirloom Traditions, their medium brush. This one's a brand new one. I'll put links for this in the description box below as well. I've got a stir stick. We're going to stir this for about two minutes. In fact, I may start doing that while we're talking about some things. This, my client didn't ask me to do any repairs, but I have done some small repairs. Uh, the lid of this wasn't very secure. It was missing screws and things like that, so I did... Um, repair that for her. She wanted that done. It is missing some trim pieces on the underside of the lid, like this trim piece that's right here is supposed to go all the way around and it's missing on the sides. We're not going to be repairing that. She just wants it painted as is. Um, this piece uh, belonged to her father's grandmother, so it's quite old, but it is in really rough shape. Um, it is uh, cedar. Um, it had an awful big sticky 
spill on the inside of it that I had to clean up and some of the agents I had to use to clean that spot were oil-based so I ended up having to prime the inside of this before I paint the inside of it. So it's already primed on the inside. I will show you the inside of the chest later. We're going to be working on the outside today. And again, sorry, my, my voice is getting there, but it's not quite back 100% yet. So I'm sorry for the scruffiness. So um, for those of you that have never chalk painted before, you're new to chalk painting, you always want to clean your surface thoroughly. Like I said, I used TSP. That is what I prefer to use. It removes all um, grease, wax, furniture, furniture polish, I can't talk guys, sorry, furniture polish residue. So um, I recommend TSP. And um, so you're gonna clean it thoroughly. Sometimes depending on the paint that I'm using, um, you will want to, if it's got a, like a high sheen varnish on it, you may want to um, give it a light sanding. Like I said, with this all-in-one product, I'm not supposed to have to do any sanding, but because there was some bad scratches and dings, I tried to sand it out as best I could to give it a smoother surface, but typically I wouldn't have had to do that. And um, you always want to, usually I hang like a, I have a backdrop I hang if I'm painting here at home. Uh, with the inclement weather, I definitely can't do this outside and it's way too cold at the shop. So I am right here in the middle of my dining room. I've put a drop cloth down on the floor. I've got one hanging over the back of my sofa so that I don't splatter any paint anywhere. So you're gonna want to you know, prep the area that way before painting. It is a water-based paint, so it does clean up well if you do have any accidents or get it on your clothes. Um, a lot of times when I am painting a whole lot of furniture when we're getting ready for shows, which we're moving into that time of the year right now, I have some grubby old paint sweats you guys will see me in. I'll apologize in advance. They're full of paint grubby sweatshirt and I just go, 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 go. So, um, you know, if I get it on my hands, I like to be able to just wipe it on my clothes. And so typically I wear paint clothes, but like I said, if you have um, something, you know, nice on that you don't want ruined, it is water-based so you can wash it out. And, um, you know, it's pretty easy today. I'm not going to be doing any fancy techniques. So the client wants a clean, full coverage finish. There's not going to be any distressing. I am going to be doing some applique on this piece, so I will walk you guys through that, as well as some highlighting. She has very traditional furniture, so this piece is going to be painted black. It's going to have applique applied and some gold highlighting to go with the furniture that she wants to put this with. We will get into distressing and blending and all kinds of different techniques as we move forward with some of the other pieces I'm doing. But since this one is um, has been on the waiting list and I need to get it done, we're gonna start with this today. And this is a great kind of basic, uh, you know, paint job to show you guys for the first video. Okay guys, I've moved the camera down and we are going to start. I am going to pour a little bit of my paint into just this plastic tub. And we are going to get a nice amount on our brush. And we are gonna start painting. Now 
Now, typically with chalk painting, um, some people, and I do with certain projects, like to go every which way with their brush strokes because it adds texture. Because of the finish my client wants, I am not going to be doing that. I am going to be trying to have um, as little, you know, very little amount of brush strokes as possible. I want a nice smooth finish. You want to always make sure, as with any type of painting, to catch your edges. Don't want any drips or ridges. And don't expect to try to get full coverage on your first coat. So you don't wanna keep going over and over and over the same area. You just wanna get a nice coat over the piece. So if you see me kinda of hit an area again, it's just because I really didn't get any paint there at all. And if you see me kind of stipple like this, it's because there's like maybe some little nicks or notches in the wood and I'm just trying to get the paint down into it and then I just do light sweeping brush strokes over that area. So I'm gonna continue doing this all the way around the piece and then I'll come back and we will do our second coat. Okay guys, so my first coat is dry. I let it sit for about an hour. I'm gonna do the second coat now. And um, this probably won't be a full coat on the second coat. It'll just depend. Sometimes you only need like one and a half coats. We'll see how, how it goes. Sometimes with the darker color, it is, you know, two full coats, sometimes three, just depending on the look you're going for. I went ahead and got the inside of the chest painted as well with one coat. So I'm just gonna do my second coat all over the chest and then it will be ready for adding the decorative paint techniques that we're going to be doing to it. I will also have to create the appliques and I will show you that process as well. So I am just going to keep painting and I will be back to show you what it looks like after I get this second coat done. I'm gonna go over some of the, the techniques and the things that were used on the project. Right now I am going to get down on the floor and show you the appliques that I did that I applied to the front of the chest and then we will be finishing off with um, adding some gold detail to this so that it will match the client's 
um, the rest of the decor and furniture that she has in the space that she'll be using the chest in. So quickly, I didn't do a video on this because I did this at like midnight, um, the night I did the appliques, and I was just too tired to try to think and share it in a video and wanted to get it done. But I will be showing you how to use these uh, Iron Orchid Designs molds in a future video. My mom and I use these a lot. I use them a lot on furniture. Sometimes you can take a real basic and simple piece, kind of like this chest, and doll it up and um, add a more elegant feel to it or, you know, just an elevated look. So these are the molds and they are made by Iron Orchid Designs. And um, I used, I'll open this up and show you guys real quick. So as you can see, there are several different designs on one mold that you can use. For this piece, I used this one here because it's real similar to an applique that is on the bed that my client already has that this chest is going to go at the foot of. So we wanted to kind of make it all tie in together. So this is the one I chose. And like I said, we're gonna get down on the floor and I'm gonna show you how I applied these to the front. But I basically, um, created the applique, painted them, then applied them to the chest and then did any touch up I needed to do. And our next technique that we are going to be doing will be on the applique and some of the high spots on the chest. Um, but I wanted to share these really quickly with you guys. So let's move down and I'll show you how the appliques turned out. Okay, so here we are. I'm gonna take the camera off the tripod too to give you guys a closer look of the applique. But there, um, there is kind of an engraved design you guys might be able to see here on the, on the front of the chest. And it's got these little diamonds that are kind of laid over on their side. And I put the appliques in the center of those diamonds. And like I said, it just kind of, elevates the look. Once we do the um, accent colors on this, it'll really bring those out and you'll be able to see them better. So we are going to be doing that next in the video. Okay guys, sorry there's a little bit of a glare coming in from the windows right now and I've tried everything to get rid of it and it's just not going away. But this is how the appliques turned out. And you can see here is the, this engraved detail. We're going to be highlighting some of that to bring it out a little bit. And then, like I said, going to be putting something on the appliques as well. But the chest did turn out a really nice black. And I'll give you a, another better look at this here in a little bit once we get the lid painted and maybe the sun will be in a different spot and I'll be able to give you guys a better look at this. Okay guys, so we have a knot hole in the top of this chest that we are going to fill. We are going to use this product called Bondo. I picked this up at my Home Depot and this is sandable within 15 minutes. It comes with this hardener cream, so we're going to be using a little bit of that. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're going to wanna to put gloves on. And I am also going to wear a mask. So let me get this opened and ready. Whew. We got to get the mask on now. This is really strong. 
Oh, well, that was, that was great. <laughs> Let's grab another mask. Okay, got my mask on. I hope you guys can hear me okay. I'm actually going to open my back door, so give me just a second. Okay, so you're gonna to wanna to use this in a well-ventilated area. I typically would use this outside, but because it is rainy and icky out, I can't do that. I'm gonna scrape some of this off of the lid. Whew, this is strong. And I just wanna mix enough to fill the hole because once this is mixed, it starts to harden within three to five minutes. So you don't want to, it's not like you can make a bunch of it up and then save it. And I'm just gonna put a small bead of the hardening cream across my Bondo. Let me pull this down so you guys can see what I've done here. So I've got the bead of the hardening cream and I'm just gonna start mixing it with my palette knife. You wanna get it mixed up really good. Just don't want any more big blobs of red in it. So it's almost taking on more of like a look of peanut butter instead of being so yellow. It has more of a goldy peanut buttery appearance. Let me move the camera back so you can see the hole. So our hole's right here. The hole's pretty deep, so I'm gonna try to get as much of this down into it as I can before I start smoothing it out. Let's smooth it off and then see if I need to add some more. I think I wanna just put a little bit more on top. We're gonna let it harden for about 15 minutes and then we will proceed on. So to add our gold accents, I'm gonna use a product called Rub and Buff. You can actually apply this product with your fingers, but since I'm going to try to get some of it into this engraved detailing that is on the chest, I'm going to use a small stencil brush. So what I'm going to do is just put a little bit of this onto a paper towel. And I'm going to almost kind of do a dry brush. I'm gonna put some on, and this is kind of a, a waxy consistency. And I'm just going to start bringing the gold down. it's not painting, you just wanna add some highlights 
to this detail to bring it out a little bit more. I'm also going to put some along this crack. And I'm not doing it consistent. I'm just going to smooth on some, some areas. I'll take the camera off the tripod too and show you guys this up closer. You just kind of hit the, the high spots with it here and there. And you don't want to get carried away. Like I said, I've removed most of this from the brush. And I'm just kind of lightly dusting it on to the trim. And I know with the angle I have to put the camera at so that you guys can see this. It's not showing really well, so like I said, I will take it off the tripod and give you guys a closer look. As you can see, I haven't put any more onto my brush since the first application. I'm going to go over my applique and just lightly dust the gold on and that'll bring out all of the texture and detail in the applique. The client's furniture has a more traditional elegant feel that she's going to be putting this with. And I'm just going to highlight the little diamond so I'm going to grab some of this paper towel I'm just going to buff in where I applied it into this crease down here along the bottom And as you can see, like, my dollop is here, and I'm only taking paint from over here where I've basically dry brushed it off of the brush. A little of this goes a long way. So what I'm going to do, guys, is I'm going to continue doing this technique over the front of the chest. I'm going to put a little bit on the handles, and then we'll put some on the detailing around the top. Okay, guys, so our Bondo is dried, and we're going to start sanding it with some 80-grit sandpaper. 
I've got my mask on. I'm gonna go over it with some 120. Normally, I'd, like I said, I'd do this outside. I'd use my electric sander on it. But I am making do today. Okay, nice and flush. I'm gonna clean up the sanding dust with the vacuum and a damp lint-free cloth and we'll be ready to paint the top of this. Okay guys, I am going to do two coats of our black iron gate paint. Want to make sure we catch this lip here. And again, we're not going to get a hundred percent coverage on our first coat, and you don't want to try to. Don't keep going over it and over it and over it again, trying to get full coverage on the first coat. Okay guys, here is the finished chest. Sorry, my voice is acting up again. I hope you like how it turned out. I went ahead and continued to add the gold gilding all the way around the chest on the trim pieces as well as the legs. And I'm gonna give you a close up now. So as you can see, I did the gilding on these raised areas of the lid, as well as the trim pieces. And then on the handles. And I've got it on the legs. Okay guys, so this is the absolute finished project. I went ahead and did the gold heavier around the lid and around the base of the chest on that detailed trim just to make it pop. 
a little bit more. I'm so sorry about the lighting, the way the light is coming in the house right now through the windows. It is creating a very bad glare. But I really do like the way that it turned out. Okay guys, so that'll do it for this painting video. I really hope you enjoyed the transformation. As I said, it was a very simple uh, makeover and um, I just showed you the basics of applying chalk paint, did a little gold gilding, showed you the applique I created and the molds I used to create them. And as I said, I will do a video on how to actually create those molds. So maybe we'll do that in the next week or so. And I just really hope you guys enjoyed the video and um, will join me again next time. So until then, you guys have a wonderful night. I'm really tired and I'm gonna call it a day. So thank you so much for watching. I appreciate all of your wonderful comments. So keep them coming and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.